so to hold. Got some embossing on it. I think it's a blob. This is a holy grail. This is the second example ever found, you guys. I'm on Pearl Street in Yankton, South Dakota. The house behind me was built in 1902, although an 1875 map shows an earlier structure in the vicinity. So it's likely there's artifacts buried back here from both eras. I got permission to excavate the grounds, so we'll see how it goes. Well, I was told the place was built in 1902. Some of the features indicate it could be a bit earlier. I know the window moldings are something you'd typically see on an 1870s or 1880s house. I'm on the south side of the property and pushed a probe rod through, hit a few things. This pit is big, I'm thinking eight feet long, maybe three or four feet wide, just loaded. We'll get this thing opened up. Being this pit was so big, I decided to dig a test hole. And I'm absolutely blown away. About four feet down, I hit this 1870s blob top soda bottle and a pond hill base. Now they stopped using pontils around the time of the Civil War. This is absolutely amazing. This could actually be one of the oldest pits in the Dakotas. some kind of ironstone pitcher here. This thing might be whole. The handle's intact. Let's see. Stuff around it. Wow. I think we're in an extremely early pit here. That's gotta be 1870s. Another one. Look at that. Look at that thin lip. I was pulling up stuff like this on an early military fort. This is incredible. It's intact. <laughs> Look at that. All oh, the bottoms knocked out. Okay. But no, this is so early. You know, I wonder if a boarding house was run out of here. I've hit a ton of utilitarian pieces. We're getting into some deeper layers and working on this plate. Looks like we could have a soda and maybe a citrate of magnesia bottle. I know uh, the plate looks plain, but sometimes these get under here. Have embossing on the bottom. This is an early mark. Wow, let's see. Stone China warranted. Anthony Shaw, Burslem. When you see that black stamping, that's always earlier. I think they switched to blue probably sometime in the 1880s. Now, this is kind of hard packed, still in a cap layer, so gotta be careful. Wow. Okay, it's a citrate of magnesia bottle. It looks like it either has some contents or some kind of uh, groundwater in it. It's a tooled top, I believe. That was the soda hole. Got some embossing on it. I think it's a blob. Oh, the 
is a Hasselton beer. This is a Holy Grail. This is the second example ever found, you guys. This is one of the greatest bottles I've ever dug. <laughs> On the back, I believe these were returnable Yankton Bottling Works. This is a Yankton, Dakota Territory. Almost every single one of these was returned, you guys. Look at that, DT, Dakota Territory. <laughs> Mission complete. This corner is looking good. I've got all kinds of stuff here. Uh, what do we have? Another uh, Philadelphia Oval style prescription drugstore bottle. Amazing age. What do we have here? That's really something. Okay, I've dug these before, but these are always found in extremely early pits. It's gotta be 1870s. It's a pipe bowl, clay pipe bowl. See here, it's like a canning jar lid. Oh wow. Okay, uh, CFJ. I think that's the uh, Consolidated Fruit Jar Company, if I remember correctly. Again, extremely early. We have here a little uh, homeopathic vial. Uh, Would have held little pills, uh, powders of some sort. All right. Yeah, the layers are super soft down here. I'm into some seeds. I think that uh, confirms we're in an old outhouse pit. This is a French square style prescription bottle. And another vial. These things are never embossed. They would have always had a paper label on them. Oh, hey intact. It's a tumbler, a jelly jar, I believe, of some sort. It's a pressed glass. Another, uh, Philadelphia Oval, made by Whittle Tatum and Company. Excelsior Drugstore, Purdy and Brecht, Yankton, Dakota Territory. Wow, this is one of the earliest embossed prescription bottles in the Dakotas. This is a big pit, We're just getting into a use layer. There's all kinds of stuff down here. Let's see. Okay, we got a Philadelphia oval style prescription bottle. That's early, gotta be 1870s, 80s. Oh, that is so early, it's a broken pickle bottle, but if you look on the bottom, it's got a, it's either a key mold or a hinge mold. This type of manufacturing was out of production by about 1880. Oh wow, look at this thing. It's a pocket flask with a threaded top. It's uh, round. You know, it wasn't meant to sit on a table. It was meant to just sit in someone's saddle or uh, pocket. Oh, hey, a shoe fly flask, tooled top that's 1870s, 1880s. Still not even through the cap layer. Look at all this stuff. Some embossing on this. I don't even know what that is. This thing's like a Jolly Rancher green. I'll go with, uh, let's see. I'll go with the cologne first. It always has this little shape to them. What is it? Uh, got a lot of writing on it. Head, Head at low and brothers, perfumers. Philadelphia, never heard of it. Could have been a cologne or a perfume, I suppose. And uh, another little homeopathic vial. There's a lot of these things here. And uh, this I gotta be careful with. I have no idea. I've never seen one of these before. It's intact. 
Wow. Bjorngard Druggist, Red Wing, Minnesota. That's amazing. That's gotta be 1870s, 1880s. Got a monogram. This thing has a lot going for it. What's going on with this? Bordeaux? Jessica <laughs> and Company? I, I don't even know. I think it's French. But uh, no, this is really something. It's that green color. And uh, yeah, it must be some kind of imported product. A little. Uh, Another vial. This one's a little longer than the other ones. There we go. Excelsior Drugstore, Yankton. That's a uh, Yankton, Dakota territory. This might be the smallest size this company made. And another little homeopathic vial. This one has a wider lip. I think this is the smallest one we've dug of these. It's a. Uh, Either a machine made or a free blown thing. Oh, wow, what's that? We got a couple things here. Oh, Hoyt's German Cologne, W. Hoyt and Company, Lowell, Massachusetts. I also find these in early pits across the Dakotas. There's a bottle in it. Uh, no embossing. It's a little uh, French Square prescription drugstore bottle. Now this thing is really cool. You know what? It's not broken. I was thinking the handle was missing, but that's just the way this thing was made. It's got that green line pattern. There's no markings on the bottom. Looks like some kind of prescription bottle and another one of these vials. And it's, these ones have the wider lip on them, so that's earlier. The lip got smaller as the years went on for some reason, just a difference in manufacturing. And let's see here. This pit keeps going. All right, another uh, Purdy and Brecht Yankton Dakota Territory prescription bottle. Looks like plenty of contents in there. Could be camphor oil, linseed oil, something along those lines. Huh. New London. Okay. Uh, Dr. Thompson's Eye Water. That's uh, New London, Connecticut. See, Dr. Thompson's kind of embossed all along the edge there. Yeah, Connecticut, so... That's an 1870s, 80s bottle. Okay, and a Philadelphia Oval prescription bottle. No embossing on this one. Look at all this stuff in here. Got a, a French square style uh, prescription drugstore bottle, no embossing. Oh, some kind of a ball neck panel piece. Wow, this stuff's early. That's a, again, 1870s, 1880s. Another little vial. This glass is so thin. I think these only survived because they're so small. Oh, 
It's like a, I think this is a mustache comb. Sometimes these have writing on them. It's an early rubber. Uh, got a bunch of rust, so I'm not sure if we'll be able to read it. It's a comb, something in J Company. I don't know if you guys can read that. It's a, got a few broken bristles, otherwise could still be used. Another little homeopathic vial, same style. This pit's getting deep. It's still giving. Let's see here. Got a broken drinking glass. It was. Uh, looks like it was for alcoholic drinks, maybe liquor of some sort. Druggist yanked in Dakota Territory. It's got a little W and a diamond. That's beautiful. It's a Millville Round style. This is really something. Look at that shape. It's uh, some kind of perfume bottle. The diamond pattern with the diamond cleating. Never seen one like that before. And another drinking glass. Uh, no stamping on it. This one looks mint. It's uh, fairly heavy. Finally made it into the use layer. This thing's loaded. We got it's all kinds of bottles. What's going on with this thing? It's a aqua piece. Looks earlier. Uh, tooled top. It's a French square style. And this thing, I think, has an applied top. Oh yeah, and a key mold bottom. This thing's super early. That's 1870s for sure. We got a, I think this is a knife edge, so a true uh, cough and whiskey flask. Would have held liquor, like brandy, whiskey. Oh, hey, a pipe bowl. It's kind of like, almost like Meerschaum pipe. Uh, the stem's broken off. bottles everywhere down here. We've got a French square style uh, prescription bottle, no embossing. Look at all these. I've got a couple of them here that are kind of wedged together. have embossing on this one. Uh, could be a shoe polish or a salad dressing. Uh, no embossing actually. Another Excelsior drugstore bottle from Yankton, Dakota Territory. That's before South Dakota was a state.
this is a really early one. It's a little uh, French square. No glass company marks. A really thin lip on this thing. Solid use layer. If you see all those specks there, those are undigested seeds. We're definitely digging in an old outhouse pit. Little oval bottle, tooled top, no embossing, likely a patent medicine of some sort. A little uh, French square style. Wow, these are getting early. Look at that little prescription, that thin lip on it. On ink, sometimes these have the company name marked on the bottom. That's a key mold. This thing's super early, got some great rainbow iridescence on it. Little uh, homeopathic vial. beer. Maybe a, oh, it's a canning jar, I think. Yeah. Oh, wow, it's actually intact. Wow, that's an old oldie. It's a ground lip. Mark of the Consolidated Fruit Jar Company. This has got to be one of the first mason jars made. Wow. Let's see here. Okay. Oh, wow. Yeah, some kind of a bar glass, uh, liquor glass of some sort. I think it's pressed glass, and this is in great shape. There we go. Another uh, Purdy and Brecht from Yankton, Dakota Territory. That's a Philadelphia Oval style. I think we've got a chalice. It's about ready. There's all kinds of stuff in this corner. I found bottom. Look at that. It's a pressed glass chalice. Uh, the top chipped, so they threw it down, but that's really cool. I like that shape. What do we have here? Okay, another Hoyt's German Cologne from Massachusetts. Looks like they uh, broke the top, prying the cork out. Okay, a little ground lip. Uh, oh, it says something on the bottom. Richards Manufacturing Company patented. So I don't know if this is a salt or pepper shaker. Uh, could have had a product in it. May have remnants of a paper label, but I can't say for sure. We have here a little. Uh, Homeopathic vial. Another one of these. We're gonna have a full size lineup. Now, this thing looks super early. Wow. That's a key mold. This was an incredibly early flask. That's solid 1870s. This is right on bottom. Lamp chimney. Oh, hey. Looks like a soap dish. JG Meekin, Hanley, England. Could be like a little serving platter as well. There's no design on these, it's just plain whiteware. 
in the final corner of this thing, down bottom, uh, all the sides. Another one of these little vials. Makes me wonder what kind of pills these folks were taking. This pit's done. Here's the hall. This was something else. Got a variety of stuff. A bunch of those homeopathic files, possible salt and pepper shaker, uh, shoe polish, that Yankton beer, blob soda, a couple pipes, cologne bottles, uh, citrate, some medicines, an ink, a bunch of prescription drugstore bottles, including those Yankton Dakota Territory ones and that Minnesota one. Got some liquor flasks, some chalices, glasses, mason jar, and a pitcher. This was a great excavation. We'll get this thing filled back in. Here's the back of the house. It's definitely been remodeled and has possibly had some additions put on. The backyard seems fairly wide open. There's a shed and a couple of trees in the way, but right over there, I kicked some marks in the ground. I believe we might have a pit. There's some glass and stove ashes down there. That's a good indicator of an early site. We'll get it opened up. through the topsoil. Looks like we might have an ink something. Oh wow, that's a beauty. It's a uh, Carter's ink with an 1897 stamp on the bottom. Wow. That looks like a Mikado style. No, my bad, an Olympia flask. That's an 1898 patent. like a shoe polish bottle. This is early machine made. I'd put this at about 1910. Wow. Look at that. It's a pitcher of some sort. It's got a really cool spiral type design on it. This thing's old, I'd say it's at least 120 years. Wow, look at that design. That's Flow Blue right there. That's uh, English transfer wear from the turn of the century. That's a really nice color. Let's see here. Looks like a black glass almost, maybe an English type piece. What do we have here? Oh wow, a big old champagne bottle. Looks like it's a turn mold piece, has some beautiful iridescence. Looks like a shoe polish bottle, tooled top. This is getting earlier. I'd put this at the 1890s. kind of toiletry product, I believe. No embossing on it, but again, that's circa 1895. Some kind of prescription bottle. No embossing, circa 1900 on this one. This 
pit is loaded. Circa 1905 prescription bottle. Oh, there we go. Oh, three piece mold whiskey, circa 1900. What is this thing? Oh, wow. Dr. Shoop's Family Medicine, Racine, Wisconsin. That's really something. It's a tooled top circa 1905. This one was sticking out of the side. This is an opium vial. You guys, wow. This would have been a personal dose of opium back in the day, which was the standard painkiller. Another prescription bottle made by the Western Bottle Manufacturing Company. And another, uh, no markings on this one. Now, this thing's wedged in here. Another prescription bottle, no markings, circa 1905. This could really be something an old pitcher. Generally these things are broken, although it seems to be intact. What do we have here? <laughs> Look at that! That's amazing! It's a uh, pressed glass. This is really something. It's well over 120 years old, probably late 1800s. Getting into a use layer, there's stuff all over the place. I saw this one with some writing on it. Whitmore, Boston, USA. That was a really popular shoe polish back in the day. Had a cold cream container lid. Sometimes these have company names on them. This one doesn't. Some kind of tool top prescription bottle. No embossing. Another, some of these need to start being embossed. This is from the Western Bottle Manufacturing Company. Oh, hey, it's intact. Got a mason jar. It's a ball. Uh, isn't the drop day or the triple loop. Uh, it's a shoulder seal style. this chemical company dad chemical company no other embossing on this thing I've never seen one before this could have held hydrogen peroxide or something along those lines an Olympia style flask no embossing these have an 1898 patent on bottom. Well, here we go. It's a little pharmaceutical product. It's a sharp druggist lip, it's amber. That's interesting. You usually don't see this style in that color. No end in sight. See some embossing on this. I think I feel some stuff underneath it. What do we have? Lowell, Massachusetts. Okay, Ayers. Oh wow, an Ayers Sarsaparilla. This is an old bottle here. Uh, I'd put this at about 1890. It's patent medicine. Looks like some kind of ball neck panel style. No embossing. What's this thing? Top to a bottle and a little uh, teacup to a kid's tea set. Looks mint. Oh, that, that's really something. <laughs> what? Oh, whoa! This is a container. Now look, there's still some contents inside of it. I don't know if there's any uh, embossing. There's no embossing on it. But look at that. It was just laying side by side. Not very often you find them uh, whole, whole pieces. I dug this down to bottom. 
and found a few more pieces, but I think it's just about over. It's a little one. Uh, Van Stans Stratina. I've dug these here in Yankton before. These are usually in earlier pits. This is likely an 1880s bottle. It's like a tooled top Olympia style flask. Like a mason jar lid or, you know, I'm not entirely sure on this one. There's no markings. I think it's some kind of a lid though, a milk glass. Looks like a blob beer. Oh, let's see what's going on. A little groundwater. You know, it's a tooled top. That's uh, a turn mold piece. That's got some good age though. I'd put this at about 1890. Here's the hall. Everything dated back to around the turn of the century. Got a decent variety. A couple of chemical bottles, medicines, a big liquor bottle beer and a champagne, an extract, some dinnerware, a bunch of prescription bottles, some glassware, mason jar, shoe polish, some of those milk glass containers and an ink. Well, there you have it. We'll get this thing filled back in.